The goal of this lab is to use a Michelson interferometer to look at the wavelength of a laser. Now this is showing you the final result of your alignment. We'll go through the alignment in some detail. But once you see these concentric circles, you're going to use the adjust on the Michelson interferometer, which will make them seemingly glow and uh, grow and shrink. And this is going to be how you actually make your measurement. But first, we're going to need to go through the entire way that you get your setup to see these concentric circles. In this lab, you're going to be working with a laser, so there's some fairly important safety rules. This laser is more or less a laser pointer. It's not that dangerous, but you should still practice good laser safety. One is to make sure that you take all sparkly jewelry off your hands and fingers. That way there's nothing to reflect the laser beam in your face. The second thing is to be aware of what your laser beam is pointed at right now, that wall, and to see it throughout this lab, it's going to be bouncing off different mirrors. So as much as possible, keep the laser beam down here and keep your eyes up high so that you don't get a laser beam right in the eye. Again, this isn't something that would cause you to go blind, However, we want to practice good laser safety. Now we need to go through the alignment. The first step is to get the laser aligned. Then the second step is going to be to get the lens aligned. So to turn on the laser, there's a red button on the back. The laser should be plugged in. And when you turn it on, you will know that it's on because there's going to be a red dot that comes out. Now again, don't try to look at this, but you can use a piece of paper or you can use your hand. So once this red dot is coming out, you want to see it hitting this beam splitter and then this mirror. There's a mirror here as well that will eventually be shining the laser beam back at this piece of paper. Now, one way to do this is again to use a piece of paper to use your hand, and I can see that it's a little bit to this side of my mirror. Now, the Michelson interferometer has a number of alignment points that have actually been set for you fairly well. So please don't touch these brass screws and that those should be fine. So you want to tilt the laser until you see the beam and you'll be able to see it on the beam splitter itself and you should be able to see the dot on the mirror. Once you have that, you'll be able to also then hopefully see a dot on the cardboard itself. So now your laser beam is aligned fairly well. Now what's happening is that your beam is hitting the beam, beam splitter. Part of it's going to this mirror and bouncing back. Part of it's going through, hitting this mirror and bouncing back. So there's actually two beam paths creating a dot that's here on the cardboard. There are two knobs here that do a fine tilt of this mirror. This is just a spring. So as you tilt this, you should see these two dots split apart and come back together. So there are actually two separate dots here on the screen, and as you move one of the knobs, you can see that this moves one of the dots up and down. The other knob moves the dot left and right. What you want to do is actually have those dots completely on top of one another, and it's not going to show up very well in the video, but once you have them really close, you might see some weird bands appear, you might see some weird kind of speckling, and that's due to interference, and that's what you want to see. So you want to have those as close as possible, and that is going to be your interference point. So once you have those two dots lined up on top of one another, we're now going to use the lens. So once you have your two dots over top of one another, you're going to use your lens. Now this is going to focus as a lens holder, and I'd recommend maybe turning the laser off for this point. Make sure you hold the laser down when you turn it off so you don't lose your alignment. Now, the top of this lifts up and this little lens slides in place. Now, we're going to have to do a lot to adjust the position of this lens. Keep in mind that before, our laser beam was hitting that screen. Now, when I turn it back on, we don't see that anymore. And if you come and look on this side of the lens, you'll actually see that your red dot is just hitting the lens and not making it through. You want to do as your, your best job to actually center the dot on the lens, and you want to look for the dot actually coming back through. So as I slide the lens over, you possibly are going to have to increase, change both your vertical and horizontal alignment. Right now, it's centered horizontally, 
but vertically it's actually going above my Michelson interferometer. And again, I'm using my hand to look for the beam. Now part of why that's happening is that because it's hitting below the central point of the lens, it's then aimed up. So we just adjust the height a little bit and there's a screw on the bottom of the lens mount that lets you do that. So now I get it close, but I can see that my laser is still not actually on my mirror. And so you just have to keep making fine adjustments to both the vertical position and the horizontal position until you can see that it's going through, hitting your beam splitter, going through the back mirror, and then you'll be able to see those central rings on that paper again. So now once we have those central rings, we're able to use the vernier scale on the side to adjust the beam position and look for the interference. So this knob adjusts the position of one of your mirrors. And so as you turn it, it's actually changing the position of the mirror, which is changing your interference pattern. So what you want to do is start with it at zero straight up. There's a little mark here for your measurements. And you want to make sure that this bar is more or less uh, parallel to the edge of the plate because this actually just turns around and so you can incrementally go uh, many, many iterations, but the device works best if you're more or less in the parallel regime. So this allows you to change the position of the mirror, which changes your path length, which then changes your interference.